it's a short list of men and women who have held UFC belts simultaneously in two divisions, and God damn it, DC, you're on that list, man. Let's see how it goes for you here tonight, though. You're the underdog. I'm one of the blessed ones, John, to have been able to accomplish the things that I've accomplished, but it's taken a lot of hard work. Really focus on the striking, the grappling, having a great team at the American Kickboxing Academy, and as I walk to the octagon tonight, I am trying to show all the work that I have put in and hope that it's enough to get the hand raised once again inside the UFC's octagon. It is amazing to think that you didn't get your start in mixed martial arts until you were 31 years old. And one thing I've always said about you, even if it hasn't been the greatest training camp of your life, you have a penchant for rising to the occasion. There's something about fight night and those bright lights that once you sort of flip that switch, you're able to excel when a lot of guys fall. I'm a competitor from yeah. the octagon to mad. I just want to uh -huh. win. This is a dream for a lot of mixed martial arts fans. And yourself, Daniel, a guy who at one point could have fought Fedor Emelianenko, he and Dana White on the same page. We got Fedor in the octagon. Team. I'm glad it didn't happen because uh -huh. let me tell you something about Fedor. He's unknown. He's an enigma. We all want to know what is Fedor Emelianenko? What does he look like in the UFC? We finally get to find out. We know that he has a crazy high level skill set, but we never knew how it would fare against the absolute best in the world. Tonight we find out, if I had to guess, I would think he would be just okay. And you got the sense with Fedor that he wasn't gonna wholly enjoy retirement if he did not check this box. Fedor Emelianenko at long last on the greatest proving ground in the sport. the tape for this heavyweight championship fight. All right, now for the particulars, we go inside the octagon to Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Daniel D.C. Cormier. And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending USC heavyweight champion of the world. Oh! Herb Dean is your referee. He's the third man in the octagon tonight. All right, they have locked the octagon door behind two of the greatest mixed martial arts heavyweights of all time, Fedor Emelianenko, taking on Black Fedor, Daniel Cormier. Yeah, yeah, Black Fedor, Daniel Cormier. That's what they used to call me when I was younger in the game, huh? They don't call me that no more. And back when I didn't have an identity, I was happy to follow in the footsteps of Fedor Emelianenko. This is going to be a tremendous matchup. They're so evenly matched. They're both so good at what they do. I'm interested to see how this fight plays out, especially early, as Fedor is known to shut your lights out with the first shot that he lands. Strong reversal there. Well, the ground and pound is there once again. Strong work here by a million acres. Certainly found the target. And another punch to the head. Trying to guard pass here, not today. No, it ain't happening. Good job understanding the transition. Nice positional control here. 
Right, so the fighter's able to reverse position on the ground, and now he's got the dominant position. Yeah, what a great job recognizing that once he got the reversal, he went right to his offense. He didn't wait, John. He did a good job of while his opponent goes, oh my goodness, I lost the position. He said, no, no, we're not done. I'm going to get to a dominant position myself. Got to be careful here. Well, the ground and pound has been on point tonight. Good work here by Cormier. Oh, flatten him on his back there. Now he's going full mount. He's trying to get to a half guard at least. At minimum, try to go to half guard. Now he's got good body position, yup. Oh, that's how you do it. Postures up and lands to the head. There it is, another strike on the ground, gets through. You can't take all those unanswered strikes. They don't have to be that damaging. You just gotta move. He's gotta start throwing down. Ground and pound keeps coming. Good movement to avoid that damage coming down. Just over two minutes to go. Oh, he's got his back. Really good job to land these strikes from top position. Well, this is some serious pressure from the top by Cormier. Oh, another strike lands from the top. Posture and punch, posture and oh, he's got to be careful there, yep. Postures up. Oh, and he lands a brutal strike to the head. All right, so a grueling battle on the ground, and no surprise, the crowd pops in appreciation as the fighters work their way back. He's going to team. Oh, how good is that as he gets out? That is great submission defense, keeping everything short and not allowing his opponent to get the submission victory. Lands with the ground and pound here. All right, we'll see if he can apply pressure inside his opponent's guard here, DC. Cormier's in half there. Oh, beautiful fight instinct there as he reverses position, and now he's got the dominant position. He did a fantastic job recognizing, man, I have got to get on the offense. From bottom to top to dominant position, what a great job. Pretty good work with the ground and down here by DC. These are big shots, and they're not glancing blows. When he's throwing, he is landing so clean that his head is starting off the mat. A series of punches from the top here by Cormier. All right, side control now. We'll see if he can advance position. Oh, in the ball. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Posture's up now. Oh, and delivers. Huge punch to the head there. Another ground and pound strike lands. Well, he postures up again and delivers another big ground and pound strike. Beautiful sequence there. He's having his way with him here. Round two is next. All right, now we take a look back at some of the action in that previous round, DC. A lot to like on both sides, really. I mean, both were intent on going forward. And what happens when nobody wants to take a step back? They meet in the middle. That's exactly what they did, and they both found success over the course of that round. All right, so there's the end of the round. We had a big submission attempt there midway through, but largely the submission Ready defense held up. It was in tight. Ready. We thought the fight was over. But stay patient, stay calm, relax, and found his way out of that deep submission. All right, here we go. Next round is underway. We saw one submission attempt in the previous round. He wasn't able to finish the job. But he got the position. Oh! 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 Oh, he's stuck in the guillotine. Oh, submission defense on full display there. He said that he was very aware of what this guy brought to the octagon and the show 
in that defense. Really, ain't good. Get one from the top here. He's got to do a better job to cover up. All right, he remains in pursuit of the submission, but the defense continues to hold up. I'm not sure he's going to be able to find a finish here. In MMA today, guys are so well-rounded. They're so gifted. It's hard to just lock up a submission, but he continues to try. And in those efforts, he has given himself a chance to win this fight. I've never been submitted. You never have? Nope. Lucky guy. I have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bottom fighter here. Maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Trying to pass the guard here, but a nice job by the bottom fighter defensively. Bottom fighter did a fantastic job of following with his hips, making sure he blocked any attempt to get past his guard. Nicely done there as he forces the miss from his opponent. He's got to be careful here. Cormier's really pressing the issue now, and he's got his opponent's belly flat on the mat. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. All right, half guard now. Not a fighter you want in half guard against you for the bottom fighter. What does he need to do? He needs to secure his underhook. He's got to be fighting, fighting, fighting for underhook. One of the most key things you can do as a bottom fighter stuck in half guard is try to frame. You frame and push your opponent away from you. By pushing him away from you, he will then want to come back into you. Right. It's like when I push you back, you want to go forward. So as he comes forward, hand goes off the face, let it slip into an underhook, build up to your elbow, then go chase your single leg. This is high-level grappling, John, from a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt named Daniel Cormier. <laughs> Cormier's looking to pass here, denied by the opponent. A lot of top pressure being applied here. Cormier is back in full mount. Oh. Oh, the ground and pound is coming. Good movement to avoid some of that power coming back. All right, so look at that. A cut has been opened around that eye area. He's taking shots over and over again to that area, and now he's dealing with a cut. Great submission defense on display tonight. Under two minutes here to go in round two. Great ground and pound by this man. Man, he's killing it on the ground. Another strike gets through. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. Fighter trying to pass here, Ooh, but gets denied. Gets denied. Great job, great recognition of seeing what your opponent was trying to do. Oh, the hard ground and pound strike lands, and that has caused some swelling or so it appears. The ground strikes continue to pile up. Cormier's back in north-south. Moving his head on the ground here, avoiding a lot of these big shots. Well, any time you are in a ground-fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Well, the more things change, the more they stay the same. He continues to land a high volume of strikes on his opponent at will. I mean, John, the guy can fight everywhere. And he can fight everywhere, meaning he can fight on the ground. He can fight in the stand-up. And he's also able to do it because his cardio is so good. Right. This is one of the best fighters that we have seen for a long time, and it is showing in this performance. 30 seconds to go in round two. Fatal Emelianenko's cheek looks like it's cut here, starting to bleed a little bit now. 20 seconds to go. Good straight hand there by Fatal. Oh, now gets an underhook to get a more dominant position. Guillotine jump. Great submission defense. Full display. Two rounds in the books. Good news is the round is over. Bad news, Emelianenko's eye has never looked worse, candidly. The cut man's gonna get in there and hopefully put some end swell on that, or that eye's gonna swell shut, DC. Well, if you're the replay guy, a lot to like in that previous round. A lot of damage being inflicted. Yeah, I mean, and look at the swelling now, John. He wasn't doing what he needed to do to move his head, and he's paying for it. You cannot allow for an elite-level mixed martial artist to connect at that rate 
and think that you will not be wearing the damage. He's wearing it now. I'm interested to see what changes he makes to give Ready, himself fight. an opportunity. Ready. Good. Round three of a possible five. Oh, and he tags him with the straight hand there. Beautifully done by Emilianenko. Another good stick to the head. Oh, left hook. Oh, shot to the body connects there. He hasn't really thrown too many body strikes in this fight, but now has taken it for a ride. Nice double leg, nice finish. Cormier's looking to pass from full guard into half guard here, but he's denied. Oh, that cut is getting worse with every passing ground strike as he lands again. Well, we'll see if he postures up and can get some of his ground strikes going here. Continuing to work out of the half guard. He's doing a really good job putting himself in position. Oh, how about that transition to top position? Beautiful work by Emilianenko. Well, it's been a wild fight thus far. Perhaps a contender for some bonus money at fight's end. These guys are going to have to dig deep. They're both hurt. They're both hurt. You expected it, though. You expected a close fight. You did not expect a war like this, though, where both guys, from the moment they said fight, went forward, got in each other's face, and just beat each other up. It's been tremendous. All right, so perhaps he's going to have to address something defensively. There is a legitimate cut around his eye. Yeah, he got cut on the eye from that last strike. He's got to pay attention now before it gets worse. Blood is flowing now. I know a lot of you like that, but he has got to figure some things out defensively or this fight's going to end. He's got to move his head, John. But the problem is, now he's got the blood to deal with. He's got a sharp striker in front of him. He has got a lot of things to deal with if he wants to win this fight. But right now, the focus needs to be on the head movement so you're not getting hit in that cut. Well, shades of Anthony Showtime Pettis against Tony Ferguson just masked in blood. This is not looking good. Yeah, it was It was like all Ferguson fighters, right? He would just destroy people. And that's exactly what he looks like right now. He looks like he has been on the receiving end of all the elbows thrown by Tony Ferguson. His cut is really bad. So we have passed the midway point in the fight. Good ground and pound here. Hard elbows, hard elbows. You have to fight back. Landing all day. Really doing a nice job getting these shots home on the ground. And there it is, another strike gets through on the ground. Print the shirts, ground and pound. These ground strikes really started to add up. There's another one. All right, he's got him in the north-south position now. I know the crowd thinks it's funny when this happens, but if you're the bottom fighter, uh, nothing funny about it. It's not funny. This is not a fun position to be in in fighting. You've got to try and change it immediately because you are carrying someone's weight, whether it's their bottom half weight or the top half. You are carrying their weight, whether you got their armpit in your face or you got their legs over the top of you. It is not comfortable. So you need to be trying to move, make them make a decision, a determination as to what they're trying to accomplish, and then you try and counter them. Emilianenko's cut on his cheek is nasty. Thank God these guys are tough, because that thing will not stop bleeding at this point in time. Lands with the ground and pound. Now he's on top, exactly where he wanted to go. Under 20 seconds now to go. Inside the closed guard now. I mean, he went right into his full guard. What does he do to try to advance himself 
to give him more of an advantage on the mat. Fournier gets the single leg takedown. Nicely done there. All right, that's three rounds in the books. We are headed to the championship rounds. All right, so the fighters head back to the stools, and hopefully this fight can continue. That is a severe cut. We'll see if the cut man can do some good work here. All right, so as the cut man gets to work, we'll re-rack some replays from the previous round. Well, he's got some work to do. The cut man's going to have to work a miracle because this guy was on the receiving end of some real damaging shots. And if he doesn't do something different defensively, it's going to get worse. And if it gets worse, the fight may be stopped. You ready? You ready? Fourth round now, fight schedule for five, five minutes. Oh! Well, how about the movement off of the back? Nice job to avoid the ground and pound here by Emilianenko. But he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Fedor Emilianenko gets back up. Right, well, he rocked him pretty good, but didn't sort of smell blood in the water, and now his opponent's back in the I mean, blood's in the water. You gotta go get it. You gotta go find the finish. You cannot let him off the hook like that, because now he will be motivated to try to go and hurt you as you hurt him. He passes the half. All right, so now we start to see some redness underneath the elbow. You gotta think he's gonna continue to attack the body with all of his strokes. Well, his opponent has not done anything to deter him. He should keep doing this, keep going to the well until his, his opponent finds an answer. Because right now, he seems lost to it. Man, this is some serious ground and pound. He's trying to put this dude's head like through the canvas. He's one of the better ground and pound fighters we have in the entire UFC. And you're seeing why. That'll do it! Daniel Cormier has done it! <laughs> so, how about that as he pounds him out for the TKO? Prioritize the finish tonight. Absolutely gets it with style points. A huge, huge result here in this arena tonight. It's always fun to see an athlete tell you what they're going to do, and then they do it. This guy told us he was going to get a finish, and that's exactly what he did. Him and his team are going to have a fantastic time tonight celebrating. They should all be very proud. Here we go inside the Octagon for the official decision to Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean's called a stop to this contest at one minute, 15 seconds of round number four. Declaring the winner by TKO and new undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Daniel DC. All right, well, you know he's got wrestling, you know he's got submissions, but he's also got power. Don't sleep on it. Daniel Cormier, your winner by TKO. You know, just pressure. A lot of pressure led to the TKO finish for Daniel Cormier. Congratulations on the massive performance, champ. I love you. <laughs>